All right. I want to start tonight off. As you can see, we're, we're starting a new series tonight. This will be our summer series. It's titled, You've Got a Friend in Me? Question mark. It, yes, it is the phrase from a popular song from Toy Story. But I want to start off tonight with a question. Does anyone here have like a best friend, just by show of hands? Okay. So, do, <laughs> you point at Cole. Aw. Uh-huh. <laughs> Everyone say, aw. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, so I, I only need probably a couple answers to this, but what is the difference between a friend and a best friend? Yes. Okay, so a, a friend knocks, but a best friend just walks in. Yeah, like they're your friend. Yeah, but second thing. <laughs> okay, <laughs> just, just the second thing, and then I'll move on, okay? Uh, best friends are more like, uh, like really close. Okay. And you can tell them anything, and they'll listen, and okay. they'll uh, listen to you good job, or, or uh, see if they can help you in any way. But friends, you don't know if you can do that to you. Okay, so friends you don't know if you can trust with everything. Best friends you do know. Yes, Melinda? Okay, so friend, that's very interesting. That's a very interesting answer. So friends are are at various locations like school or church, but best friends will be in all of those places. They'll go anywhere with you, right? That's what I'm hearing. All right, I'll take I'll take two more. Okay, we'll go Marshall and then we'll go Eden. That'll be it. So Marshall. All right. (laughs) A friend you can be yourself around, even to the point where you're insulting them. Jonathan, how does that make you feel? (laughs) All right, Ida, you got one more for us? So a best friend, and what was the second part of that? Okay. So a, a regular friend will just lie to you and tell you you look good, and a best friend will tell you when you look bad. I get that right? All right. Very good. Those are some wonderful definitions. That was uh, better uh, than I could have possibly thought. Well, as we're starting this new series, you, you've got a friend of me. You know, the goal is that we're going to spend the summer, right? So this is a nice long series that's going to get us through most of the summer. We're just going to take a look at biblical friendships. We're going to, we're really, tonight we're going to start off and, and ask this broad question about where we see friendship in the Bible. And then the rest of the time, the rest of the, the weeks and the summers, we're really going to spend looking at various case studies, right? We're going to look at it, at several friendships th- that we see throughout Scripture and see what we can learn from them. Um, but each, each time, I'm going to strive to give you a, an example that I can, I can think of. And the first, I don't know why, but this is the first friend group that I, I wanted to show you. Can, can we throw the, the picture up, Matthew? This is, did Matthew remember to put the picture in the program so that when Nathan says, show the picture, he can go click, boom. Nope. Friends, right? Friends do it at the last minute. Best friends. <laughs> there we go. All right. Thank you, Matthew. Here. Quick finger. The Akuna Matata. Yes. Timon and Pumbaa, right? Those are our examples. These are best friends. If you've seen The Lion King, you know that they are best friends despite being of two different species, uh, despite Pumbaa's uh, issue with uh, flatulence. They, they, they are good, good friends. They even um, get in all kinds of trouble together, right? And, and they even begin to take care of a lion cub together at one point. Uh, fascinating movie if you have not seen this. Uh, but, but like I said, during this, during this series, we're going to take a look at, at, you know, this is a fun friendship, but they're not in Scripture. So we're going to look at more scripturally based uh, because, you know, I, I strive to preach from Scripture, y'all. It's just part of the gig. Uh, but like I said, we're going to be all over the place tonight. We're not going to look, look at a specific case study. We're going to look at, just broadly ask this question, what does the Bible have to say about friendship? Okay, and we're not going to cover every last uh, verse or, or passage that we could explore, but we're going to look at just a few tonight, okay? So, 
Hang with me. This is going to be a little different, right? Because there's not one passage to read from you. We're going to read a few different ones as we look at several Proverbs tonight, okay? So first, we're going to be in 1 Corinthians 15. I'm just going to read you two verses. And, and uh, well, first, I'm going to give you some context, I think. 1 Corinthians is, is written by Paul. Remember Paul? We just did this whole series on Thessalonians and the author was Paul. Yeah, I'm getting some thumbs up from Melinda at least. Melinda is at least tracking with me. Thank you. So... So Paul is, is an apostle, and he's writing this letter to the Corinthian church. In this particular chapter, Paul is upset, okay? Sometimes Paul gets upset. He gets upset through all of Galatians. He gets upset in Corinthians, okay? They're, they're doing some wacky stuff. And one of the issues he's, he's addressing in this particular chapter is this issue that many of the Corinthian Christians have stopped believing that Christ is resurrected. Is that confusing? Like, <laughs> you're... Yeah, many, many of the, the Christians at the Corinthian church, right, have stopped believing that Jesus was resurrected. Right, this is problematic if you're a Christian, right, when you believe in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So they've, they've stopped this kind of fundamental belief, and he takes issue with this, and he, he, kind of, he has this whole argument that I'm not going to talk about. But he points out one of these issues here, and I'm just going to read you the, these two verses here. Beginning in verse 33, he says this as part of his argument. He goes, Do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals. Come to your senses and stop sinning. For some people are ignorant about God. I say this to your shame. So Paul is disappointed, okay? He is, he is frustrated with them because basically what's happened is they've let some people come in and influence them and, and try to tell them that the resurrection didn't happen. And they're just buying into it. They're like, oh, okay, yeah, maybe you're right. The resurrection didn't happen. And so they're being led astray at this key doctrinal level, right? Like this is a, a huge doctrinal position to be wrong about, <laughs> the resurrection of Christ. All right. and, and Paul points out in his whole, this whole passage here how, how silly it is to even be a Christian if we don't believe in the resurrection of Christ. It's just silly. It, it's like, why? There, there's no forgiveness of sins. There's no salvation. We're, there's no reason for risking our lives for this. There, none of that makes any sense if we don't believe in the resur resurrection of Christ. And ultimately, he, he points out that it's really just because you're hanging out with people who don't believe in the resurrection that you don't believe in it. You've let them lead you astray. And so, so that's the issue here. Now, we're going to read several other Proverbs, but that, that phrase he used at the beginning is actually a proverb. He says, bad company corrupts good morals. So that's like a common saying in his world in that day, right? We, we see it in a couple poets like Menander. Uh, if you look at other uh, Greek literature, which if you like to read Greek literature in your free time, you might find that. But um, I know only Ian likes to do that, and I typically don't. So, <laughs> so, so this is a, a common proverb, like a common saying that he says, right? And we have a whole book called Proverbs, don't we, in Scripture, right? Th those are all written by Solomon, Right, And so that's where, really where we're going to take off tonight. There are no more questions, y'all, for now. Um, but we're going to look at several other Proverbs. These, written by King Solomon, who is king over Israel right after David. He's considered the wisest man ever because when asked for, you know, God asked him, hey, what, what gift would you ask of me? And he says, I want to be wise. And that's what he gives him, right? So he gets all this wisdom and he writes this book of Proverbs. And so we're going to read just several of these because there are several times where he mentions friendships. Now, you got to understand, when we're looking at the book of Proverbs, okay, they're not always in, in these large sections. I can't just say, yeah, Proverbs, uh, the whole of Proverbs 2 is all about this, right? Sometimes they're about different things. And so sometimes you have one verse that doesn't make any sense right next to another verse, right? Because they're Proverbs. They're sayings, right? He's collecting these sayings, okay? And so we're going to read several of those. The first one is Proverbs 13. 20, unless I've moved ahead. Nope. Proverbs 13, 20. It's very similar to what Paul says. It says this, the one who walks with the wise will become wise, but a companion of fools will suffer harm. The one who walks with the wise will become wise, but a companion of fools will suffer harm. So this is a very similar, uh, similar thinking that Paul's got going on. He's like, look, those who you hang out with you're going to become more like those people, right? If you hang out with wise people, you're going to become more wise. If you hang out with fools, life's going to go poorly. 
Right? We've all heard the, the term guilty by association. Right? That's like one of our modern day proverbs, guilty by association. It's like if I'm hanging out with Jonathan and Jonathan gets in trouble for something, they're going to consider me guilty too, aren't they? Yeah, see, you all get it. So give you an illustration of this. We all remember Kevin Skinner. You're looking at me like, what kind of question is that? Well, Kevin Skinner, a previous youth pastor here, right? He, he, we go on a mission trip. It's the last mission trip that him and I ever went on together, in fact. And we got so lucky. We got paired together, right? Because when we did the World Changes mission trips, remember, we get sent out in different groups. You might have like one or two other people from Otaga in your group. <clears throat> so I get sent out in my group. And up until this point, I think I'd been like alone every year with no other Wataga people. I'm just hanging out with total strangers. The first year I was hanging out with people from Louisiana and uh, Mississippi. I was the only Texan that year, right? So this last year we did it though. I get thrown into a group that's going to lay flooring down. And Kevin, lo and behold, is with me in the group. They just paired us together. We didn't ask for it, but we got paired, and I thought, this is going to be a fun week. It's just me and Kevin, and we're hanging out with all these other guys, and we made a friend, y'all. We made a friend, and his name was James, and James was fantastic, a wonderful human being, and he had the best accent I've ever heard in my life. And after a week laying floor with this guy, Kevin started to sound a lot like this by the end of the week. I mean, he was talking like this and saying, Ronnie, is that Galveston over there? I think that's Galveston, which doesn't sound anything like Kevin, but that's what he sounded like at the end of the mission trip because we were hanging out with James all week. And I mean, his whole personality had shifted to James. He was talking like James. He told me, because I mean, the whole way home, y'all, the whole way home, he's still talking like this. And, and when I said bye to him, it, it, it was like, bye, Nathan. I'm just like, where's my friend Kevin? <laughs> it's like, what happened to you? And, and I find out a couple days later, I, sh- I show up to work, and he's perfectly fine again. I said, your accent's gone. He's like, yeah, lasted for about 20 minutes at home before Sarah fixed that. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> So he hung out with, with James so often, he, he just started talking like him. I had a friend of mine who, who's from Georgia, and he comes to Abilene. He speaks like the rest of us until he went back and lived in Georgia for a while. And then when we hung out, he had an accident again. And I was like, what is wrong with you? You speak like a normal human, right? Which is really to say, speak like me. Um, so we're, we're seeing this same concepts. Right? Let me read you Proverbs 22 now. Proverbs 22, verses 24 to 25. Same concept here. It says this. Don't make friends with an angry person, and don't be a companion of a hot-tempered one, or you will learn his ways and entangle yourself in a snare. Right? right. Don't hang out with, with angry people. Why? Because you're going to be angry too. Hang out with wise people so that you'll be wise. It's all, it, it's all under the same concept that's right here. Friends influence each other, okay? Friends influence each other. That means we become more like each other is what happens. You become more like who you spend the most amount of time with. This can be a bad thing or it can be a good thing, right? Wise friends make you wise. Unbelieving friends will challenge your beliefs. Angry friends make you angrier. Really sad friends will bring you down. Really happy friends will help you get excited, we become much more like these people. We, we tend to develop the same hobbies as people around us. You realize that you get each other into hobbies is what you do. One person starts playing a game, and now someone else is playing a game, and all of a sudden half of our youth group is playing Elden Ring. Okay, so like that's, that's how it starts. You, you all influence each other. See, we often become more like those we spend the most time with, and so that begs the question, who should you spend time with? Don't, don't give answers. It's a rhetorical question. You should know this by now. Come on. Who should you spend time with? As we look at this series, and we're going to look at lots and lots of friendships, but that's, that's a recurring question we'll need to carry with us throughout this whole series. Who should I be friends with? Who is worth being a friend and who is worth being a best friend? Who gets to qualify for that spot? That's an important question to ask yourself as we keep going. Let's look at, a, at another Proverbs. We'll get at some different ideas. Proverbs 17, 17, it says this. A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for a difficult time. Let me say that again. A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for a difficult time. So this is, 
There's another proverb where we see friendship mentioned. It's actually one of our first connections to this kind of family language. You heard the word brother in there, right? We've talked a lot about that lately. What we're seeing is that this this real kind of friendship that we see in Scripture, the really good friendships we're going to see in Scripture, a lot of them are actually related to each other. Or they practically become that way. We're going to look at Jonathan and David at one point. Uh, David, who becomes the king of Israel. Jonathan, who should have been the king of Israel by birthright. And they become really good friends. They should be rivals, but they're really good friends. And they're not related. And yet, they become closer than, than even brothers. And so, we, we see this kind of family language approach. And, and like I said, many of these, these case studies we'll go through will show us that. And, and scriptures have a few other places in, in Proverbs which strike at this idea, which, again, I can't read you every single proverb tonight. Uh, but, but there are several. But the, the point is this. Scripture is going to make clear to us that when pursuing friendships, quality is going to be way more important than quantity. Right? Facebook people in here. Instagram people in here. Right? How many followers you got? Largest number of followers. Who do you think has it? Raise your hand. Haley? Raise your hand. No? No one, like, wants to admit that. <laughs> it's Ian. Ian, how many followers you got, man? I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm reeling from that for a moment. Ian, because I like you, I'm going to give you, like, 20 bonus points for that comment, but anyone else would have gotten, like, negative 5 billion. All right, we've we've checked, we've we've looked that up. Isn't that crazy though? We can just look it up. Who's who's your followers here? Quiet back down. Quiet back down. That's kind of a big deal for some people. Though you ever see people who've got like a ridiculous amount of friends on on things, right? Cole, what's the highest number you've ever seen? <laughs> That's the highest number, six hundred. Man, I've seen I've seen some people out there that like have that like. I'll occasionally get Facebook requests from people I don't know. Does anyone ever get friend requests or followers of people you don't know, right? Do you, <laughs> I don't accept requests unless I know the person, okay? That's just my general rule of thumb because I don't want randomness on my, on my feed, okay? But you ever, like, go look at some of those people? Some of those people who want to be my friend, I think they're just after me as, like, a number. Like, I don't. I don't know them, right? I don't mean anything to them. But I look at their friends, and they're in like 320,000 friends. And I'm like, how? How do you have enough time to talk to that many people, right? And they don't. They're going for quantity, right? Sometimes we go for quantity of friendships, but, but quality is far more important when we're pursuing these friendships, especially when we're influencing each other, right? That's the first point. If friends influence each other, then... The quality of friendships are going to be important, bless you. Because who you've got around you, if that's who you're going to be like, then you've got to pay attention to the quality of friend. Let me read you Proverbs 18.24. It says this, One with many friends may be harmed, but there is a friend who stays closer than a brother. Many friends, you might be harmed, but there's, there's a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Let's go back to Timon and Pumbaa for a minute, all right? They're just a great example, Timon and Pumbaa. So Timon and Pumbaa are such great friends that they bring in another friend, Simba. And for a while, it's the three of them. And what's, what, you put the picture back up, thanks. You are a best friend. Thank you, Matthew. <laughs> You've made it. You've recovered from your earlier fallacies. Um, <laughs> you also distract me sometimes. Timon and Pumbaa, they bring in Simba. What's their philosophy on life? They have a very important philosophy. I thought y'all might know it. Hakuna Matata, right? Which means what? No worries. No worries, no worries for the rest of your days. So, so Simba gets brought into this friendship that's all about not worrying, all about just hanging out together all of the time. But Simba comes from, like, the pride land, right? So he comes where he shows up lost away from the pack because his own uncle manipulates him into thinking that he was responsible for the death of his own father, and so he kind of like banishes him and sends him away. So his own family, which was his uncle, right? That was, that's family. Talk about crazy uncle. How about evil uncle? This is terrible. Right, so evil uncle here, he betrays him. So, so Simba runs, betrayed by his own family, and yet he finds these friends upon almost immediate contact, becomes best friends with them, and we break into a song montage of Hakuna Makata. It's crazy. We watch him grow up into this big 
lion, Hakuna Matata. And so eventually he goes back to save the kingdom. And what do Timon and Pumbaa do when he goes back to save the Pride Lands? They go with him. You seeing this? Even in, even in Lion King cartoons, y'all, <laughs> there's friends that stick closer than family. Right? So it's not even always about blood relations. There's this, there's this loyalty that we can see. You see, Timon and Pumbaa were quality friends. There was only two of them, but they were quality friends. Let me read you just the last proverb we're going to talk about tonight. This is a very uh, special one for our group, though many of you won't know it. <clears throat> Iron sharpens iron, and one person sharpens another. So that used to be like the theme verse for this student ministry. What did you call it? The Edge. edge. Yes, back when we had a cool nickname, The Edge, that we were, that was the key verse that was underneath that, right? That was under all the graphics. It's it's iron sharpens iron, so, so another person sharpens another person. Another friend would be another way to translate that. So it's referring to how you, like, sharpen a blade. Right? How do you sharpen a blade? You take it and you scrape it on iron. Do we know this? Here, pay attention, y'all. Well, you're, you're, you're doing the motion for me. Thank you. Anna. <laughs> so that's, that's how we sharpen things, right? We, we push it up against another sheet of iron. So the, the metaphor here is just like blades sharpen each other, so do people. People can make each other better. Friends can make each other better. So as you grow as a person and believer in Christ, you'll do that more when you're with other people. Believers, friends, real friends, best friends, make each other better. Because we know this, right? We know that friends influence each other. We know that because friends influence each other, it's important to have good quality friends. And then finally, it's important to be a good quality friend, to be a friend that makes other friends better. When it comes to our our faith in Christ, we influence and are influenced by others, and so we ought to be living such lives and and living such friendships that we're inspiring our other friends to be more like Christ. Does that make sense? We want to live lives that are so Christian that our our other Christian friends feel more like comfortable being Christians. Does that make sense, y'all? You help each other constantly or you hurt each other constantly, whether or not you say it or anything, your very behaviors will affect whether or not you're, you're hindering someone's faith or helping someone's faith. You see that? That's so important to catch all of that. And so those are just three things that we can catch from just these Proverbs. And again, we, we could look at several other passages of, uh, passages of Scripture, but to be honest with you, I get nervous cherry-picking things like this. We have to be careful, right? It's a little easier to do when they're Proverbs because they are just free-floating like that. But we're going to we're going to take a look at some things over the next several weeks, over the next, I think, nine weeks, eight or nine weeks. We're going to take a look at different friendships throughout Scripture, and we're going to see what we can learn from them. We're going to see what, what, what kind of characteristics God asks us to have as friends. We're going to see what kind of people did good jobs. We're going to see what kind of people did bad jobs. We're going to take a look, a deep dive into biblical friendships. And, and these are three themes that you're going to notice, that friends influence each other, that quality is always more important than quantity, and that, that finally that friends, real friends, are going to make each other better. Real friends are going to end up influ- influencing each other positively. And so as we get ready to conclude tonight, Matthew can come on up. I just want to ask that question to y'all tonight, and I want you to hold on to that question. What kind of a friend are you? What kind of a friend are you going to be? Think about all your friends, just for a moment. Don't look at them if they're in the room, but just think about it right now. Who are your friends? Who are your best friends? And another good question to ask when you're thinking about your best friends, would they call you a best friend? Would they call you their best friend? Would they think of you as a genuine, helpful, healthy friend? Would they, w- w- could you say that your friends inspire you to know and love Christ better? Could you say that y- your friends would say that about you? That you know and that you, you help them know and love Christ better? These are all important things to ask with each and every friendship we have. And so tonight, ask yourself that question. Wonder about that just just a little bit. Wonder about that. What kind of a friend are you? And if you need to uh, talk to us about 
anything you need prayer for, right? Maybe you, you don't even know Christ. It's going to be much easier to be a Christ-like friend if you know Christ. Otherwise, you're just going to be pretending and faking and, and, and real friends, best friends notice those things, right? We talked about that. Real best friends can trust each other and they know each other. They're authentic with each other. You're not going to be authentically a friend if you can't even authentically answer the question whether or not you know Christ. So tonight, if you need to deal with any of that, if you need to just talk with somebody and pray, uh, like we always do, we're going to stand in the back, all the adults, and we're willing to be those friends for you. We're willing to be trustworthy. We're willing, willing to care for you and to hear you and to listen to you. So if you would stand with me, I'm going to pray for us, and we're just going to worship and sing this last song together. Father God, thank you so much for this night. Thank you for this summer coming up, Lord. And thank you for this chance to explore uh, your word and try to understand what we can about uh, friendship, Lord, and about what, what your plans are for, God, what you desire friendship to be. And we're excited to look at your word for it. And we just pray that you'd guide us throughout that. Lord, I pray for all the students in here tonight that, uh, that they would be excited to learn more about this, God, that they would be excited to learn how to be good friends to one another that they would be excited to learn how to make good friends and who to look for and who to stay away from, God. Or be with each and every one of us as we strive to know you and love you better. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.